pleased to be here today with uh, Professor Thomas Vigand, who's one of the co-authors of ITU's award-winning H.264 uh, our video codec and its successor H.265. Welcome uh, to ITU TV, Thomas. Thank you. Uh, I understand that you're working on a, a new project, the tactile internet, which sounds like an internet that you could uh, touch. Could you explain to us a little bit more about what, what it is? Um, the tactile internet connects things that move, like cars, robots, humans. It even has an application in smart grid. And uh, what, what are the key challenges that you're facing in the development of this, this technology? The current um, uh, wireless and mobile infrastructure adds too much delay to all sorts of communication in order to connect things that move. Um, the latencies that we see are around 100, 200 milliseconds, and uh, that's too much in order to connect cars, for example, mm -hmm. in a reliable way. Uh, so how, how do you go about reducing that latency? The goal for the tactile internet to have is to have communication with a latency of about 10 milliseconds. So we will have to basically touch all components of the network and redo them and optimize them uh, for low delay, but also for uh, security so that all the communication that is relevant in order to control moving things arrives safely. So that would include, for example, the communication between chipsets themselves? Yes we would need to make sure that uh, we reach a high degree of security unseen before. Uh, so so, so what, are the, what are the next steps? There's some research required. We need to basically uh, move away from the old Shannon paradigm that you uh, make use of uh, interleaving and, and channel coding uh, the way we have. We need to consider new technologies, and that is, of course, also subject to research and technology development. Broadly speaking, you mentioned some application areas, but I wondered if you could uh, outline more specifically what, what types of applications you, you, uh, you foresee. The tactile internet touches many areas of our life. Uh, for instance, network cars, we can increase safety on the street very much. Or we would allow cars to drive in a convoy with like one meter uh, distance between each other. Uh, another area is networked augmented reality. So anything uh, that involves multiple sensors and things are changing, we can connect them and allow these to be used. Or we can connect robots wirelessly in a factory. So they, for example, they would lift away together and be coordinated by this type of communication technology. Tactile Internet's uh, been described as a key driver for 5G. I was w wondering if you could explain to us uh, how that works and whether that implies a time frame of uh, 2020. We are looking roughly at that time frame 2020 for the tactile Internet. Um, 4G, up to 4G, we have been increasing the throughput that we uh, get to the user in order to transmit just information that humans typically consume. Uh, we're now getting into a time where we need to connect moving things, cars, machines, robots, and uh, that is something that the tactile Internet and 5G will, will achieve. I understand. And, and, and lastly, this is uh, ITU TV. So I, I was wondering what role you could foresee for ITU in, uh, in the development of the tactile Internet. At some point when the uh, research and, uh, is done and the technology is developed, uh, we need standards in order to allow the economy of scale so that uh, these communication components that we will use in the tactile Internet are affordable to make uh, this vision a reality. Excellent. Well, it, it really sounds like something that's going to be worth watching over the next few years. So thank you very much for coming in today and describing to us uh, this, uh, this fascinating new technology. You're welcome. Thank you.